Okay, so once upon a time, and this was actually today, I was working on a trigonometry problem, and it was it was this problem here, where I had to find the height of the big green tower, this big green tower, and I had to do it simply by by standing, firstly standing here, um, you can imagine my eye level is kind of at the ground, I was standing here, and I looked up at the top of the tower, and I measured the angle of elevation to be beta. And then I walked some, some distance, which is y, forwards and I looked up again and now the angle of elevation had grown to now be alpha and using only so we only have given to us beta and alpha and also y I had to find the height h right and you can see I've also drawn x as an auxiliary thing that we're going to use and to do this in order to do this my initial thoughts and what I initially did straight away was I formed two equations using the tangent ratios of firstly x and using the angle alpha and, and the tangent function and then using x plus y the length x plus y and the angle beta because of course if this is a tower we always picture towers to be going straight up so that's going to be a right angle right there however after I looked and after I did the question, I realized that I hadn't taken the care to read it properly and it said to use the law of sines. And I was, and I was like, oh, well, okay, well, maybe that was easier because the first time I had to solve some simultaneous equations, maybe it would have been easier if I had just used, in this, in this triangle here, um, you can see this, this particular triangle, the black triangle, right? We can use the law of sines if we, if we can find this angle up here. And when we find this angle here, sorry, get that a bit more of an angle. If, if we find this angle here, well, we can see that an external angle to this triangle is the angle alpha. And we know that the external angle is the sum of the other two angles. So alpha is equal to beta plus the unknown. And the unknown is going to be alpha minus beta. Hopefully you can read that, probably not, but that's alpha minus beta in there. And we can use the law of sines here, and we can find the side which is uh, drawn in blue. We can find the side drawn in blue, and also then we can use right angle trigonometry only once, and we can get to the height from there. So I would say both me methods are about the same difficulty. But the thing that always occurs to me when I see something like this is that we did we use two different methods to, to get to the same problem to get to the same answer and not always but sometimes when we do that sometimes we can see a proof we can use one of the methods to prove the other and it's almost like a hint from the problem that there is a proof hidden in there and often it's not the case but sometimes it is and in this case my intuition was telling me that i could probably i could probably use this to prove the law of signs or at least prove it for this particular configuration which is drawn here where the altitude which is the green tower the height of the triangle is outside of the triangle that is to say that in the red blue black triangle there is at least one obtuse angle which is why the green line this altitude here this one is lying outside of the triangle which is one configuration we could probably set this up a bit differently with the blue line on the other side of the tower. But that, that's not what I did in this case. Okay, and so let me show you what, what I did in order to prove this. Let me solve now, as I said, uh, the simultaneous equations, and we're going to find x and h. So let's first write that the tangent of alpha, what's that going to be equal to? Well, the opposite over the adjacent, which is going to be h over x. Now, secondly, we can look at the tangent of beta. And that is going to be equal to um, h over x plus y, that, that long base, right? The whole distance to the tower. Okay, cool. So now, I'm going to just modify these equations a little bit. In the first equation, I'll times both sides by x, and we'll get x times the tangent of alpha is equal to is equal to h 
And in the second equation, of course, we have to times both sides by x plus y, and we'll get x times the tangent of beta plus y times the tangent of beta is equal to h. Cool. Okay, so now what we can do to solve these is first we'll solve for x. We'll equate the two left-hand sides of the equations because the two right-hand sides are equal. They're both equal to h. So the two left-hand sides are also equal. And I'm just going to kind of skip a step and I'm going to subtract x tangent of beta from both sides because I can, I can just see what's going to happen there. So we're going to get um, x times tangent of alpha minus tangent of beta, just factored that, and that's going to be equal to, let's look at the other side, what do we have? Well, we all we had there was uh, y tangent of beta. Great. Okay, so now we can just divide both sides and we can solve for x. Of course, x is going to be equal to um, that same y tangent of beta over tangent of alpha minus tangent of beta. Okay, great. Okay, so now that we have found x, we can very simply find y using, um, using this particular equation here. I'll just I'll actually just put a circle around that. Right, we can, oh, sorry, we're not finding y, we're finding h, and we can, we can find that. So now we're just going to times both sides by the tangent of alpha, and on the left-hand side we'll get, we're going to get h is equal to tangent of alpha y tangent of beta with the exact same denominator, right? You can see. that that is not going to change. Okay, and we have everything now in tangents, but the real question is, how are we going to get it into sines? That's a very good question. And well, the first thing I'm gonna do, simply because I know that we're kind of investigating this particular alpha minus beta angle in here, in this triangle, right? And I'm get what that kind of tells me, that kind of gives me a hint of something which might be helpful, which is the angle, sub the angle difference formula for sines, uh, for tangents, sorry, because we have tangents so far. And let me just quickly put that under here. Um, and this doesn't, of course, come out of nowhere, that tangent of alpha minus beta is it always equal to the tangent of alpha minus the tangent of beta over um, one plus the tangent of alpha times the tangent of beta. Of course, we can derive this simply from our sine angle sum formulas and our cosine angle sum formulas, we can just take the quotient of those and just simplify algebraically and we will get this. And of course those come from complex numbers. Now, simil similarly, we can actually look at what our, our h is equal to and we can see, well, it doesn't quite look like, it doesn't quite look like the formula that we want and for that reason, we're going to change this tangent formula into the cotangent formula using the identity that the cotangent is the reciprocal of the tangent, okay? So the cotangent of alpha minus beta, and all we're going to do is flip this fraction upside down, okay? So we're, on the top, we're just going to get, um, and I'll turn it into two fractions as well. So on the top, we're going to get a 1 over the tangent of alpha minus the tangent of beta, and on the other one, we'll also have tangent alpha minus tangent of beta here. And on the top, we're going to get um, over here the product tangent of alpha, tangent of beta. Okay, cool. 
So now this looks, it, it bears a lot more resemblance to what we actually have here, right? So we can use this formula. We can see, we can see the, the, that this, this half over here is actually in our equation. And if it's in our equation, we can just substitute it in there. So we're gonna get tangent of alpha minus beta, and I'll just subtract this, this first term here from both sides, right? We're gonna get that the tangent of alpha, tangent of beta over tangent of alpha minus tangent of beta is equal to the tangent of alpha minus beta minus one over the tangent of alpha minus tangent of beta. And I'll write that in off camera. Okay, so I did exactly what I said I was going to do, and we still don't have any signs, and that's a bit worrisome, but I'm sure we can get some if we use the fact that the tangent is actually just the quotient of the sine and the cosine. So looking at this last term here, let me find a an expression for that in terms of sines and cosines. So we have um, our one over, and then of course we can write sine of alpha over cosine of alpha minus the sine of beta over the cosine of beta. And that is going to be equal to, if we find a common common denominator, our common denominator is definitely going to be the cosine of alpha, cosine of beta. And then on top, we're going to get, we're gonna just cross multiply. We're gonna get the sine of alpha, cosine of beta minus the the sine of beta cosine of alpha and hopefully you recognize this the numerator in the inner fraction you can recognize that to be the uh, angle addition formula for for sines okay okay or the, actually the angle subtraction formula and so now we can do the one over um, and we're going to get that that sine of alpha minus beta over the same denominator, cosine alpha times cosine of beta. And one more equality, we can just use the reciprocal of the fraction and we're gonna get on top the cosine of alpha, cosine of beta, over and then sine alpha minus beta. Okay, cool. And now we can take that and we can put it back into what we have over here. We can write an equal sign for this, right? And also I'm gonna substitute the cotangent is also the reciprocal of the tangent. So it's gonna be the cosine over the sine. And you might already see that there is a equal denominator in there. So let me show you what I mean. We have uh, y on the outside and then cosine alpha minus beta over the sine alpha minus beta and then using this formula from below minus the cosine alpha cosine of beta over the sine alpha minus beta. Great. And it is great because we have another angle subtraction formula, the third one that we can use, and that is that of cosine. The cosine of alpha minus beta equals cos alpha cos beta plus sine alpha sine beta. And that's perfect because that fits exactly with what we've got down here. We have the cosine of, in the numerator of this new fraction, because we have like denominators, we have cosine of alpha minus beta minus the cosine of alpha cosine of beta. And that is just gonna give us sine of alpha sine of beta by the identity above. So what we have now, what we have is y, brought that in from the outside, sine alpha, sine beta over the, um, the sine of alpha minus beta.
great. Okay, and you can see we are clearly, we are clearly getting closer because we have all signs now, but we have to look, we're trying to get that blue length. The blue length is in our red, blue, black triangle where we're talking about the law of signs, and we want to get the blue length, but we have the green length, h, and we have the black length, x, and we have um, our relationship all the way back here, this one up the top, which is highlighted which is circled in red, right? These are the facts which we have we have to use. Now, let's see, let's see. So given this formula here, we can use in the, the right triangle, which is blue, green, and black, we can use the Pythagorean theorem. And we know that x squared plus h squared is gonna give us that blue side squared, okay? I, I'm not gonna name that right now, but so, our, our expression for the blue side, and I'll just put our blue box, okay? And our expression for this is equal to h squared plus x squared, right? And now we can substitute h because we found h down here, right? We found h. We can put in, oh, well, it's of course going to be the, by the Pythagorean's theorem, it's going to be, the blue side squared is equal to that, but that's fine. Um, we'll do the square root later. So right now we want y squared sine alpha sine beta. And we're going to take that and put that over. And these are all squares. Sine squared of alpha minus beta, and I sure hope you're watching this on two times speed or something like that, because I'm not going very fast. Okay, so, oh, and, and this is a plus, plus, and looking at our formula from back here, we had that the tangent of alpha is equal to h over x, that was our very first equation, right? And now we can, I guess, we can times both sides by x, and then we can divide both sides by the tangent of alpha. And we can get a formula for x in terms of the tangent of, in terms of, in terms of h, which we have, right? We have h down here. So now with our new formula for x, we're just taking this and we're dividing it by the tangent of alpha. And dividing by the tangent of alpha is of course the same as timesing by the cosine of alpha over the sine of alpha, right? So plus, and it's going to be the same thing again, y squared sine squared alpha sine squared beta over, over sine of alpha minus beta, except that, except that we're going to now times that by cosine of alpha over the sine of alpha, right? And our two, and, and, and of course it is still all squared. Okay, so now we'll see these signs will cancel with these signs, right? Okay, because we're, because we're multiplying. And so now what we're left with is this all becomes, it has a like denominator, so it's all gonna become one fraction. And I'm gonna factor the numerator, we're gonna factor out the y squared um, sine squared beta. And in the brackets we'll get, let me put an equal sign, in the brackets we'll get in the first fraction, we have that sine squared alpha that we don't have in the second one. And in the second fraction, we have the sine squared beta. And taking all of that, we'll take all of that and put it over that same numerator as always. Awesome, we're nearly there, we're so close. Because now we have a formula and, and we can 
take the square root of that and you'll see all of the individual terms are just going to have a square root and this term up here we can see that's our pythagorean identity so that's just going to be one so we're so when we take the square root and when we get the blue length the blue length is just going to be all it's going to be is y sine beta over sine alpha minus beta right and so our next step, our next step is we're going to take that blue length and we're going to divide it because we're trying to prove the law of sines. We're going to divide it by the sine of the opposite angle, which is beta. So this is the, the new thing we've got. We have, um, well, that's not an equal sign, but the new thing we have is our blue length, which is y sine beta over sine alpha minus beta and we're going to take that and we're going to divide it by sine beta and that's just going to cancel the sine beta so all we have left all we have left is the length y over sine of alpha minus beta and 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 what is that okay i'll just put this step Right? What, what is y over sine alpha minus beta? Well, that is exactly what we use when we get the law of sines. You can see alpha minus beta in the red, blue, black triangle is the opposite, is the opposite angle to the side y. So what we showed, we showed that the blue length divided by sine of beta here, it's going to be equal to y divided by the sine of alpha minus beta. So what we did is we proved it in a massively unnecessarily complicated way and we showed it only for the case where there's an obtuse angle but i think it's interesting to see to see another proof of the law of science subscribe for free oxygen